Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are open, and the window seat of our name, commends the thoughts of our hearts, and the inspiration of all the Spirit, that we may hope and love you, and dwell in magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
the only prayer in picture imagery helps us to focus on what we are about to hear in Holy Scripture this morning. Let's pray. O oh God, you alone judge rightly and search the depths of the heart. Make us swift to do your will and slow to judge our neighbour that we may walk with those who follow the way of openness and faith and so enter your eternal kingdom. Grant us for our Lord Jesus Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. If there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing of spirit, any compassion and sympathy, then make our joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being for a cause for one another. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each one of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of your sisters and brothers. Let the same mind be in you which was in Christ. Who, though in the form of God, did not regard the quality of God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is about every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 25. The response Remember your blessings, O Lord. Remember your blessings. Know your way, O Lord, teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are God of my salvation. Remember the your mercies, O Lord. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your sinners' love, for they have been from of old. According to your steadfast love, remember me, for the sake of the Lord, your goodness, O Lord. Remember all the mercies of the Lord. God and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in his way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. Remember all the mercies of the Lord. Yeah. 
Lord be with you. And also with you. This morning, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and challenged his authority. So Jesus asked them the question. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, <coughs> Son, go and work in the vineyard today. The boy answered, I will. I will not. But later changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said, The same, and he agreed, I am going, sir. But did not go. Which of these two did the will of the Father? They said it first. Jesus said to them, Truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and prostitutes are entering into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in a way of righteousness. And you did not believe them. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw that, you did not change your mind and believe them. Gathered throughout the world in the multiplicity of languages and customs and cultures today, this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. We sit for this morning's homily, sir, which John is doing. Good to see so many of these heroes in youth today. Now, in the evening, we will be talking about harvest, where the fields are being cut, grain being produced, and um, we think about our food. And as a tradition in churches, we bring the best of our food to the altar, to God. And that food is then passed on to those we regard, perhaps, as the least among us, the poor, the sick, the lonely, people in hostels. Well, unfortunately, we can't do that today. But, I promise you a heart in this home. I promise you a harvest that is different. We are not living in the norm, we're living in the temple. So this is perhaps something we need to discover and think about as we go through that temporary and we look for the light on the other side. Now, it's unfortunate that a lot of people these days think about what they consume. And not where it comes from. From workers on the low wages. From those who are in poverty. Set against the huge corporations that make money out of the food industry as they help us to consume. As I say, today we will bring the best of our fruits for the altar. But instead, let's today think about celebrating human gifts that God gives us and we give each other, our friends, our families, human gifts, our carers. Now, as children, my husband and I, well, we didn't get on. I lived in London with my mother and my sister. She lived in Truro, Kuhn. She did. She does now. She lived in a small hamlet called St. Clair, in Cornwall, where there was nothing to do, no nightclubs. If you wanted to entertain 
he went out and did it himself. And we spent a great deal of time there, especially in our summer holidays, when the sun was beating down. It was like, it was like this, it was harvest basically, and we used to cut the long grass and make houses in it. At least she did, and my sister did. I tend to go off on my own because, well, they just wanted to be on their own. Um, so my sister and my cousin played together, and growing up I didn't really know. My cousin didn't really know my family. After my cousin's father died, there was a bit of a rift in the family. But when my father died when I was 12, my mother phoned my aunt and they began to get to know each other again. I and my cousin still do the girl. In fact, on Christmas, when she came up, we had a massive round. And we didn't talk about each other around the whole Christmas. She is a critical pianist now. Her main function is more than function. It's a gift. She sits with a dog. She tends it, she bathes it, she looks after it. And last year, probably my hands for the us, I became temporarily blind. And she phoned up out of the blue and she said, We're coming up to get you. We're going to come down with us and I'm going to look after you. All this, and you know, I'm going to put you in. And, um, they came up to the hotel and we drove back to Truro where they lived and they installed me in their house and um, I got to know my cousin, her husband and my son. And she stayed with me throughout my operation. She was there, she held my hand because I couldn't even get up the steps of her house. I couldn't go to bed without being directed to the bedroom. She was my carer. And I came to realise that she was a totally different person to the person I thought she was. I wouldn't be here today without her and without the help of my friends. And for many of us, that is true. I'm reminded that just as others help us, we also help them. Just as God in Christ poured himself out for us, so we pour ourselves out for others. I was thinking about St. James this morning. Not James the Gospel, uh, not James in the Gospel who um, was an apostle, but James, the brother of Jesus. There is a letter attributed to him towards the back of the the back of the Bible. And at, at the start of Jesus' ministry, we are told that the family did not agree with what he was doing. And yet, there is a change. There must have been a change from the James that did not believe in what Jesus was doing to the James that we read in the letter of James. He talks about faith. He talks about the rich and the poor being equal. He talks about the rich helping the poor. But that richness and poverty in human terms, God sees the rich as equal to the poor. But as James says, the rich has a responsibility to the poor. They need to show their love. To show their faith. In this way, we 
you become love to each other. In that love, we will find peace. In that community, in that communion with each other, we will find peace, helping each other. And those are the fruits of heart. In that love, we will find peace. It is the peace of Christ. And in that peace, we will find hope. <coughs> and hope will sustain us even in the darkest times because that hope shows us the light, the light of Christ, even in the darkest times. And that spirit of Jesus, that light, will be with us always. Now, we are chosen by God, even before we're born. And when we're born, God is always with us. But in our humanity, we feel a loneliness. Because our true love, our first love, is God. And we are not with God. We are not in the immediacy of God. God is with us, but something in our humanity stops us from being convinced of that, believing that, totally and absolutely. And we probably won't feel any of that loneliness, that yearning, that love, that, that need, until either we return to the Father, or Jesus returns to us, here. But we have each other. Each of us has each other, and we must be Christ to each other. This is the heart. This is the heart. We must give to each other. We must give our gifts to each other. We must give our care to each other. We must give our love to each other. It's sad that we see so many people whose lives are focused on consuming. But we need to be a witness to something greater than consuming, eating, drinking, partying. They are not important, but the most important thing is the harvest of our soul, the harvest that tells us to go out, to be active, to love one another. If we can't hug someone, call them. If we can't speak to somebody face to face, be with them on Facebook or wherever, social media, the phone, be with each other. And this really is the same thing that we need, as Jesus says in the Gospel today, we need even those who say no, 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 no to our lives to eventually say yes. Paul says it's like a race. Paul says it's like a race. That we race and we reach the end. So, our beginning is an important, it's our end that is really important. And our end lies in Christ and our end lies in others. So why not today, you would say, let's celebrate the heart with the human gifts that God gives to each one of us, each other.
light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not made, of one being of the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became the cup of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified in front of Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one Holy Catholic and that is Church. We acknowledge our baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. This morning, Enid leads us in the prayers of the people. We sit to be thoughtful and prayerful as she enables us to pray.
you are watching online or are in the building. Pray everyone that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty God. And may the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands to the praise and glory of His name for our good and for all this church. From all the gifts you give us, God, we present this bread and wine at your invitation. That through the transformation of the Spirit, they will become for us a gift of your Son, Jesus, whose Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word. And all things to come into being. You fashioned us in your image, and placed us in the garden of your delight, though we chose the path of rebellion. You would not abandon your own. Again and again you draw us into your covenant of grace. 
You gave your people the law and taught them by the prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy, and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels of heaven, evermore praising you and joyfully saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lord God, you are the most holy one, throned in splendor and light. Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of our weakness, made perfect in human love. Embracing our humanity, Jesus shows us the way of salvation. Loving us to the end, he gave himself to death for us, dying his own. He set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. On the night, he gave himself up for us all. He took bread into his hands and gave him thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his beloved friend, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given up for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave it thanks. He gave it to his friends, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this. As often as you drink it, to be.
forever and ever. Amen. This thing to the news on Friday night of murder of the policeman in the hospital. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. 
I love you above all things, and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already here, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. This is how we know what love is. Christ gave up his love for us, so that we too must give up our lives for our sisters and brothers. Lord, may this Eucharist, in which we proclaim the death of Christ, bring us salvation and make us one of them forever. We pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body, live into his life. We who drink his cup, bring life to others. We who the Spirit writes, give life to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth may to praise your name, to Christ our Lord. Amen. Each week our little note sheet will be provided. If you put out on Wednesday mornings or Wednesday mass. So please either take it with you, or if you don't want it, please throw it up, screw it up, and put it in the bin, please don't leave it lying around. Thank you to John for a very thoughtful homily this morning, and to Edith for the prayers. You are all very welcome uh, to the three gardens afterwards. The Lord has been coming, the wound has gone, and it's sunny outside, so please do enjoy us. As I've heard it a hundred times before, our neighbouring parishes are deeply, deeply envious. Our neighbour Steve, who has volunteered to keep the clock in good time, apparently he used to do this some years ago. So it's been running about 45 minutes late since all night. Uh, so uh, Steve has very kindly agreed to do this. Uh, once that's finished and YouTube is off, we just remain for work. Something else that uh, needs to be said. The electoral roll. This must be the only year in my 20 years here when I discovered there's something like nine or ten parishioners who died in one year. If this is your church, this is where you belong or associate, please join the electoral roll. It's at the back, it's the form and the pen. If you've changed your address in the last two or three years, Please, can you also take them up and add them? The lockdown is covered with a few emails from many of the Christians, uh, and also a little bit of more forms of love out of date. Not least, when we used to have a large number of people during the week here, almost none of the weekday congregation was set up actually on the wall. So please, if you've moved, take one and put a little bit of them today, or even here, if this is your parish church now, Please do fill in a form, that would be great. Let's stand for the lesson. The Lord be with you. And the Lord is with you. Go forth in the world and peace be strong and of good courage. Hold fast all that's good. Render to no one injustice for injustice. Support the weak, honour the afflicted, love and serve all peoples, rejoicing in God's creative spirit, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. To those of you watching online and to those of you in the building, thank you for your prayers this morning. Let's go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.